Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 9 of the front dash build. In the last video we looked at two multifunction colour displays that I'd built and in the video we brought them online for the first time and we ran an operation test to check they were all working properly. In this video we'll look at the design focusing on the 3D model and the PCBs for the tactile switches. Let's buckle up. So the MFCDs are made up of six layers and I 3D printed these so I picked up a budget 3D printer going back a couple of months and these were the first things I've printed with it. In terms of the six layers the first one to look at is layer 2 which I just simply call layer 2 back and if we just take a moment to have a look at this one. All of the large holes here are so wiring from the PCBs I would design and drop into this top bit were able to pass through. Now at this point in the design I hadn't made a, a decision on which monitor I was going to use at the back of it so I just wanted to be sure I had lots and lots of holes in this to, for, to allow the wiring to, to drop through because my first thoughts were to use a Lilliput monitor. But a little bit further into the design I decided I'd use a, a monitor that doesn't have a frame because it's easier to incorporate it into this as a, a standalone unit without it protruding beyond the, the actual footprint of this MFCD itself. So we've got smaller holes just here on the inside and smaller ones on the outside and these are so when the layer one the top is put into place that can hold that top part on so if we have a look now at the pcbs there were four top right bottom and left so i designed four different PCBs. I mean in reality it was actually three PCBs. I had PCB top, PCB bottom and then this one here for PCB right was mirrored over to the left there identical. So I had three different circuit board designs and what we can see here these squares represents the caps that will be clicked on top of the tactile switches which are soldered to the PCBs. If we now bring in the top layer and this now gives us a completed main front frame of the MFCD. So that's layers 1 and 2. Now if we just take the layer 1 away and just have a bit of a closer look here Okay, so what we're looking at is, if you like, the conduit that would sit underneath the PCB. So from the smaller holes here that you see going along, there'll be two kinds of screws that will go through there. One will attach a number of spacers that will extend up to where the PCB is floating at the moment. And the others are to have a screw that goes downwards for holding in place some of the other layers and in this conduit is where all of the wiring from these PCBs will run and then they can drop down these bigger holes to what would be the connectors that then allow it to connect to and interface into the hub which is the keyboard encoder. Now if we just zoom back out here And if we take away these top layers and then have a, a look at some of the other things that will sit beneath it. So it came to a point where I had looked at different monitors and I decided upon one that was frameless. It didn't have a frame so the footprint would be smaller. And then I have drew this here to represent it. So the 
area that looks like it's reflective shows a display area and the rest of what you can see shows the overall footprint and this little bit on the side here represents the ribbon cable coming out because I need to allow for that. So with the monitor chosen I wanted to design uh, what was layer 3 which is a jig for the LCD and you can see like a pocket that it will sit into. The idea being that when we drop that monitor into it it sits completely flush like that because that means that this overall layer 3 which holds the LCD can then sit up against layer 2 just like that. In the other layers they would help me tackle a number of other things that I needed to think about so if we take away these layers here the next layer was layer 4 and that was what I call PCB holder so we almost need to look at this from the rear side now because where the monitor's sitting in this area here and this gaps for the ribbon cable to pass through we're now looking at what would be the the back of the MFCD and these four holes here are to mount the PCB that drives and controls the LCD screen let's just spin that back one of the things I found was that the PCB does run hot it runs at quite some temperature so I designed a layer that would have a fan mounted which I could extend back and control the distance obviously via the spacers to get it in the right position to cool that PCB down and the final layer 6 was just called layer 6 RJ45 because these rectangular cutouts here allow me to have keystone jacks that will click into them and then the wiring from the PCBs can feed through the various holes dropping through the layers and they'll be fed into those connectors that will be mounted into those those square cutouts there. So if we now just take a moment to in reverse build the layers back up and we can see all of it together of what we're going to build so we start off with what we've got in front of us it's layer 6 and that's for the the connectors the RJ45 that then above it has layer 5 that's a fan holder layer 4 will hold the PCB that drives the LCD display layer 3 is the jig that will hold the LCD screen and it will hold it flush as you can see there layer 2 is the main back of the front bezel the PCBs will sit on top of small spacers to make it sit at the sort of height that we see here leaving enough room for all the wiring to run underneath it and then finally we'll have the top layer and this in front of us is what we're looking to build what we're now going to do is take it a layer at a time and in looking at each layer just look at some of the considerations to make that layer work so the first layer we'll look more closely at is layer 2 and within that layer we're going to have a look at the PCB design and if we start by looking at the top PCB I designed the PCBs in dip trays and you can see a 3D rendered view at the bottom of that PCB. I solder on the components needed because the height of the conduit within which the wires will run is quite limited I solder the wires directly onto the pin headers. These PCBs have two main parts to them. The first is to allow a completion of a circuit upon pressing the momentary tactile and the other is for illumination of the LED within the tactile for the backlighting. At the bottom you can see a simulation of the backlighting and the circuits are really straightforward in so much as each of the LEDs is powered in parallel and that's via a 12 volt supply that runs through a resistor. 
if we now simulate the supply of the 12 volts and we can start to see the amount of current drawn by each of the LEDs given the resistor values and with a 1.5k resistor it's looking at drawing about 6.7 milliamps per LED. By playing around with resistor values we can get an idea of the extent to which it will impact upon the brightness. In some of the testing I've done it looks like 1.5k will illuminate it sufficiently. If we were to test the theory of the simulation, if that says it's about 6.7 milliamps per LED, then I'd expect it might actually draw somewhere between 6 and 7. So overall, the total current drawn is probably looking at somewhere between 180 and 210. And if we move on now to an actual test with the multimeter, it's actually drawing 187, which is about 6.2 milliamps per LED. I chose a resistor value and the brightness of the LEDs based on the transmission of light through the caps that I designed. I went through quite a few different iterations of cap design until I reached one that I was happy clicked on properly. On the left is a cap that I got online. And the ones on the right are ones I've designed and 3D printed. Transmission of light through the white PLA looks pretty good. I now add a skirt to the caps, so once layer 1's in place, you can't see down the side of them and see any view of the PCB. I print and paint enough caps for both of the MFCDs and some spare. There are three variants of the cap. You have two variants at the top here which have a skirt only part way around so they can sit next to each other closely whether in a vertical or horizontal configuration and then the ones at the bottom here which have a skirt all the way around and are for the OSB buttons. The tops of the 3D caps should be just about adequate for what we need. The skirts around them are a little bit untidy but they won't be seen once layer one's in place and we can now see one that's been engraved and is backlit and the transmission of light looks pretty good. So in this video we've looked at the overall design as a 3D model and then we've then looked closely at layer 2, the PCBs that go into that layer and the tactile caps. In the next video we'll continue to look at the design and we'll start to look closely at the other layers. Thanks for watching.